So I, I know that you mentioned as a value investor, you make very infrequent bets. And when you do, you know, you're really going big. Uh, could you give us a little insight into what's what's your daily life like? Obviously, you're not, you know, buying and selling every day. So do you constantly just think about stuff, analyze new companies? You know, what, what, what do you do on a daily basis kind of as a value investor? Well, I mean, I think I think uh, you would do you would do well as a value investor if you uh, enjoy reading and uh, enjoy spending time with yourself. Uh, those are good traits. Uh, and uh, you know, while human contact is good, I enjoy those things. And uh, so, uh, so I, I mean, I, I mean, uh, you know, a, f a few years back, uh, I, I was uh, I was having din dinner with Charlie Munger, and he'd mentioned that uh, he would love to see long histories of General Motors, and he said he thought that would be a great class to teach. You know, just the I said, well, you can you can see long histories of the business in something like Value Life. So he said, no, that's not what I'm talking about. He's saying, I want a hundred year history of GM. Okay, and I want a hundred years of numbers for GM. So where, where can I get that? And I wasn't sure uh, where he can get that. And so, uh, but recently some, some kids at uh, Boston University, uh, uh, I was talking to them. I was actually doing an analysis of American Express. And they said, oh yeah, they had annual reports from 1950 on Amex. So I just asked them, hey, uh, can you get old reports of General Motors? Uh, and they said, yeah, we can get all the reports from the beginning. So they sent me a Dropbox file, uh, which had every GM uh, annual report, I think from like um, 1911 onwards. And um, so I emailed uh, Charlie's assistant, I said, hey, you know, Charlie mentioned this to me a few years ago. I have the reports. If he wants them, I'll send send you the link. So she said he's very excited to receive them. Okay, so then I sent her the the Dropbox link, and then uh, uh, then she wrote back. This was just before the Berkshire meeting, and then she wrote back saying that I've been instructed to finish printing them before we leave for Omaha. Okay, and it was like twenty-four thousand pages. You know, it's a lot of it's a lot of lot of pages, right? And uh, so she said, I'm busy printing, okay? And, um, and uh, so this was on a Tuesday. I think normally Charlie leaves for Omaha on a Thursday. And I saw him in Omaha on Friday. So when I, when I saw him on Friday, I said, uh, so did you start reading the GM reports? And then he goes into this whole thing about, you know, uh, the, the nature of the company and all the things in the early years and this and that. And uh, he was plowing through them. And then, uh, then I met him again after that, and you know, so he was picking up insights uh, into GM. They have no, I don't think they are looking at making investment GM or anything like that. I think this is pure curiosity to understand how the world works, right? And so I said, okay, let's uh, do this myself. I said, let's start myself reading GM reports from 1911 to see if what what. Um, insights can be gleaned because I'd never done that. I'd never, I've never picked up the 1919 Coke report, for example. And so I started reading uh, General Motors and I actually got through to the 50s now. I've gone through from 1911 to the early 50s. And, um, and my God, it was fascinating because I think the thing is that it's like, you know that a asteroid's coming in, but they don't know it uh, because it's like 19, uh, 28 and everything looks great and then you know the crash comes and then the even that crash is nothing because in 1932 from 1929 1932 really crash and then even that's nothing because all through the 30s uh, you're going through really tough times and then uh, like in 1941 um, 42 the company is informed by the US government not to produce any passenger cars so from 1942 till the end of the war, uh, GM is producing zero cars. They're producing airplanes and all kinds of things for the military, but no cars. And, and then you get to 1946 and the, the country has not had a single new automobile produced for like four years. You know, so this, this is just an amazing history. Um, and then of course you can see the, uh, the, the revenues and the cash flows and the brands are being built and all the different 
you know they introduce the automatic transmission and all of that so uh, I actually get gained a lot of appreciation that um, you, you you get a much deeper richer insight uh, into these businesses uh, with with some of that reading you can also get some of the same uh, insights from reading uh, biographies autobiographies you know like like I'm sure Warren and Charlie read uh, Goizera wrote a wrote a book I'd love to buy a world of coke and then the previous guys at coke had written uh, several books on coke so you could you could go back and look at the history of the company uh, through those biographies and such as well so yes yeah, so I think that uh, if you can set your life up in a manner which gives you uh, large chunks of time to do reading but uh, reading not from the context of I'm going to make an investment uh, reading from the context of just getting better at knowing how the world works and then uh, then I think you I, what I find with uh, with with Charlie is that you know when you look at recently like the Valiant saga you know some of you might be familiar with Valiant and uh, I don't think Charlie's ever read uh, annual report by Valiant I mean he sits on a board of a hospital uh, but a lot of people sit on hospital boards or access to uh, different aspects of the the healthcare industry uh, but he had insights about Valiant that a lot of hedge fund guys didn't have right and they had armies of people doing doing research on it and so so you get to wisdom uh, which is different from just being smart you know so I think that's what it gives you it gives you uh, a certain wisdom and if you're starting at your age and sounds like you've already started which is good uh, then uh, then you can start building up some uh, some advantage over your peers over the years thank you guys for watching I hope you enjoyed don't forget to hit the like button and to subscribe if you haven't done it already